This is Drom Shekasuto. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, how are you doing? So, uh, I'm supposed to have a phone conversation now. It's kind of an online um, words of Torah, Chizuk about prayer and Hid Bodedut. It's a women group that are talking and learning about ways to connect to Hashem. And I wanted to share that with you, so I'm just going to be kind of with a phone. And you're more than welcome to enjoy this lecture if you want. So, Bezat Hashem, today we're going to speak about the power of the individual prayer. And the individual prayer is very different than the written prayer. Many of us are many times trying to connect ourselves to the Creator through the written prayers that are written in the books, in the sitters, and the songs of King David and other righteous people that wrote and composed amazing prayers. And many times we find it hard because the things that are written, first of all, might be written in different languages than the languages that we're used to. And also, um, we can find ourselves um, not so connected to the content, to what that's written. Like, he was talking about things that were bothering him in those hours, but I'm kind of bothered with other things, like cleaning for Pesach, or having issues in the house with one child, with a husband, with a friend, whatever, job, fears, anxieties. It's not always so simple to find the right prayer from a written source. So, um, for that, the Creator blessed us with the ability to speak. And it's a known thing that the prayers that are written, been written for us, been given for us, only for that purpose, um, for us to remember that we are allowed to pray on our own and that we can and should speak to the Creator like those righteous people um, were doing it themselves. Like Abraham that was waking up every morning and going to the same place. He didn't go to a synagogue. He didn't go to Beit Midrash. He was going in the field to a location that he felt comfortable with a nice view. And over there he was just pouring his heart, was talking to his father in heaven, and Isaac was going every noon time, and they established Shacharit and Mincha and Maile, they established those three prayers, but ideally they went just to talk, and Jacob every evening, he went to the field to talk and to express his feelings, and King David was not reading Tehillim, he was not reading from the book, some of the prayers the individual prayers that he was praying and talking his heart to Hashem when he was alone in the desert, so he was talking about that, and when he was locked and scared in his room and hiding under the blanket, so he was talking about that, and when he was hiding in a cave, so he was talking about that, when he was sad, when he was depressed, in every moment of his life he expressed his feelings and shared his thoughts and his desires, holy hopes, with the Creator in his own language. And those verses been written and been given, passed to us, like this illuminating torch for us as a reminder to wake us up to the blessing, to that tool that been given to us by the Creator, and for us to express our own feelings and our own emo emotions and to ask for our needs and for the needs of all of our beloved ones. So, it's one thing to read from the written prayers, but, and we're obligated to do that in the amount that we are, but on top of that, and that's the main prayer that, um, that we've been blessed with, is the individual prayer. Now, there is no real recipe, there is no real way that a person should do it. Also in the book Likute Moran of Rabbi Nachman of Weslev, that he put a huge mark on that concept that he called it Hit Bodedut, the individual prayer. He is describing that Hit Bodedut in many ways. 
One of them is that you need to judge yourself and to check yourself if you were okay, if you did the right thing and maybe you had mistakes. And in another place he's saying that you need to have prayers that will express your inner desires and sometimes he's explaining the Bodhidut in a way that you should nullify yourself completely to the Creator and to know that you and him are one and you should even express the words of prayer in a way that you and God are one by saying, may it be my will. May it be my will means that I am part of the Creator. I am praying to myself, to my divine soul, to the portion of heaven that's been treasured inside of myself. And there are places that Rabbi Nachman is talking about being quiet and not being able even to open your mouth and say one word of prayer and just looking toward heaven and yearning and hoping for salvation to come. So the, 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 the rainbow of, the range of opportunities, of ways of, of prayer is incredible and, and is, is not limited at all. And the only thing is that a person should um, express his honest prayers and feelings and, and holy desires and Rabbi Nachman said on it that when a person um, is being helped by heaven he has Siata Dishmaya and his prayer individual prayer is successful he is talking to the Creator like you talk to your best friend so I must say that from my life experience that is the most powerful advice um, that I took out from all the advice that um, that uh, that refers to that are referred to prayer to individual prayer, because when I need to do tshuva, when I want to confess on something wrong that I feel that I did and that I realize that I mistaked and and I want to fix it, and first of all, my first step is through prayer. So I will confess to the Creator on my mistake like I'm confessing in front of my best friend. It means that I will not feel shame when I'm talking to him. I'll just be open and I will tell him all my heart, listen, I truly don't know what to do. Like I feel so bad with myself and, and I'm, I'm so ashamed and I, I, I feel so so wrong with what that I did and, and I need your help and and listen I did this and that and, and I'll go deep into the details and I'll I'll really gonna take that stone off my chest. I'll I'll try to talk about it like I talk to my best friend. And if I want to pray for something, so again I'm gonna ask that holy request from the divine one while I put it very deep into my mind that I'm asking from my best friend. means that I will not be scared to ask him, like I'm going to call my best friend even if it's the middle of the night. Look, I'm stuck and I don't know what to do. My car's engine doesn't work. I don't know how to turn on the car. Please, like I'm on the highway. Help me. Like I need your help. Are you able to come? I won't be scared and ashamed to ask him because I know he's a good friend. So. In the same approach, with the same positive attitude of talking to my best friend, I will ask my needs from heaven, from the Creator. I will tell him, hi, how are you, what's going on, listen, like, that's really the way I open my Hitbodeduyot. I'm talking to the Creator, like I talk to my best friend, telling him, listen, I'm stuck, like, I need this, I need that. There are places that... It's mentioned that we need to lengthen prayers and to pray long prayers. So, I must say on it as well, many rabbis were talking about doing six hours of it, bodhidut, to stand for six long hours and to talk. I have an issue with it and I'm not contradicting that amazing thing of going and doing six hours it bodhidut, but really to go and to stand and to beg for one thing for six hours, for me it sounds like a lack of faith, and I'll explain why. I think that it's an amazing thing to stand and to pray for six hours, and if you feel like talking for 11 hours or 18 hours, 
and I'm mentioning those hours because those are things that I did myself. I made like hundreds of times six hours Eid Bodedut, and even righteous people with divine spirit testified on me that I made more than thousands of hours of Eid Bodedut, and it was already seven years ago, and I did for many, many years. I was going almost every night to do six hours Eid Bodedut, and sometimes even more. Once in Purim, I made 18 hours of it Buddha Dut. So I don't have no problem with a person standing and open his heart and talking to the Creator like you talk to your best friend. But to stand again like a robot and to say, Hashem, I need a house, 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 Hashem, give us a house, Hashem, give us a house. It's taking you to a place that I feel that is wrong. I think that the Creator, we need to understand who He really is. The Creator is our life. He is the source of life. And He's your best friend. He's your soul. He's the light that shines from within. He's your hope. He's your happiness. He's everything good that you have in your life. And we need to connect ourselves to Him from a place of 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 partnership, of real friendship, of, of being together in, in, in the situation and understanding that the Creator Himself, He is not separated from us. It's not that you're talking to a divine source that is separated uh, from you by heaven, by the sky, by angels or whatever. You are facing while praying and while living in front of the King of all kings, the one who said and made the world to be, and He wants to help you. He wants to give you everything you ask, everything you need, with no doubt. There is not, not a thing in the world that the Creator doesn't want to give you. So you'll ask, so why am I not receiving all those things that I'm asking for? Why it takes so long, so many times for me to be answered? And the answer is, um, is hidden in that verse that we're saying, For your salvation we were waiting all day long. What does it mean? Usually when people are saying, I'm waiting for your salvation, it means I wait for you to save me. But that's not the real meaning of the verse, because we're saying, For your salvation, we're not saying, I was waiting for you to save me all day long. We're not saying Shetoshiaoti that you're going to save me. We're saying for your salvation means that Hashem Himself He is waiting for that salvation Himself. The Creator Himself is hidden. The Creator Himself is in a certain exile. The Creator Himself is in a hidden place, away from His children from his beloved ones and his tearing eyes are crying for the sorrow and pain of the exile and the Creator needs our help as his children. We can see those situations in our lifetime many times that our parents, even though that for many years they seem to be so strong and powerful and great and in some cases in, in a certain time of life, you recognize certain weaknesses and that your parents, they need your help, they need your love, they need your support. And not only because of their age, just because that they are sensitive and fragile. And the kingship of earth is similar to kingship of heaven. It's written, Havu godel lelokenu. We need to give power to our God. It's written on God Himself, Tash Koho, that since the days of destruction and things that took place in such a disappointing way for him and the relationship with his children went so wrong and so down the hill, the Creator's power went weak. And we need, need all the time to remind him to believe in him like that you believe in your child and you tell him you can do it and you can make it. We need to believe in Hashem. We need to believe in the Creator. 
We need to give strength to our God and to tell Him, You are the one. You are the one that can heal us. You're the one that can, that can save us. Because the Creator, it's written after the days of the flood, Vaitatsev el libo, that the Creator went sad. The Creator's heart been broken by all the disappointments and all the sorrow and all the tears. The king is a king that is handcuffed, that he is tied in his hands, and he cannot set himself free from the exile until a wise person, that is probably the Mashiach, will come and will set him free and will atone. And on that the Creator is asking from us, on Rosh Chodesh, Haviu alai kapara, I'm asking you to atone for me. I'm asking you to help me with the fact that I minimized the moon, that I brought down the evil inclination, that I made certain things in the world, that I exiled my children. And it's written, Malo le'av she'iglait banav, a father that exiled, sent his children away from his table. He stayed with nothing in his hands. And the Creator's eyes are tearing, and two drops, two tears are falling to the ocean, to the large sea. The Gemara is describing the Creator crying and roaring three times every night, at midnight and before dawn. And, and the pain and the sorrow of the Creator is impossible for us to understand and to bear. But we must understand that as loyal children, we must call Him from His hidden place and to remind Him that our love is eternal and that we're not giving up on His love and that He should not give up on our love. And when we will come back to Him, He will come back to us. Like the verse is saying, Shuvu Elai Vashuva Elchem. If you will come back to me, means to believe in me, to believe that I am the one that created the world, that I'm the one that opened the sea, that I'm the one that saved you from so many plagues and, 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 and wars and decrees, and I was the one that took you out of Egypt, and I was the one to save you from the decree of Haman and Achashverosh, and I'm the one that brought you to the Holy Land of Israel, and I am, and on and on and on. All the great things that we know and we need to remind ourselves of that and to stabilize our faith in the Creator and to talk to Him like we talk to our best friend. And therefore, I'm not standing and repeating my requests over and over. Please Hashem, I want a house. Please Hashem, I need a house. Or please Hashem, let us have Shalom Bayit. Let us have Shalom Bayit. I'm not talking as a robot. I'm not reading from a note. I'm not reading from a book. I'm just hanging on with Hashem. I know Hashem, you want me to be happy. And you also, I want you also to be happy. I need you Hashem, I need your help. And I, I assume that you need my help as well. Please let me know what you want from me. What can I do for you? Please, Father in heaven, let me know. What can I do to make you happy? What can I do to help you? First thing that comes up in my mind, Hashem, is that you want me to, to, to help your children. What is more important for a parent than his children? So please, Hashem, give me the right advice. What can I do for your children? There are people in need. There are people that are suffering, people that have so much sorrow and pain and grief. Give me the right advice. Let me know how can I help them, how can I assist, and give me the power to do that if you want me to do that. So please... Choose me and give me the power, give me the tools, the vessels, the power to go and to, to affect people's life and to help them and, and, and let me do some other things that you want and let me know how can I help you and what do you want me to do and on and on, all those amazing things that are waking up in your heart while you're talking to Hashem, to the Creator, are the things that you need to express um, with your heart. Those are the things that you should um, tell the Creator um, from the bottom of your heart. And to believe in yourself, it's to believe that those thoughts that are coming up in your mind are the real honest thoughts that the Creator puts in your mind and wants you to pray for. The main sign for you to know that your prayers are accepted is that you have the power to pray. 
the fact that the Creator puts words in your mouth, like we're saying in the beginning of the prayer of Shmona Yisle, Hashem, we're asking, Sfatai Tiftach, open my lips. And then we're saying, Upi Agiti Ilatecha, and then my mouth will praise you, will say the praises um, of yours. So we're asking from Hashem the, to have the power for, of prayer, because without His help we're not even able to open our mouths. So if you found yourself that you were able to pray, that you were able to express your feelings and to share your holy desires and or to do whatever, even if you found yourself you find yourself that you were able to to do tshuva, to apologize, to say Hashem I'm sorry and to ask for forgiveness and whatever was on your heart in that day, it means that the Creator was willing to hear that prayer. And therefore, he gave you the power to pray like that. And this is an amazing lesson for me, to know that when I'm praying, I'm being answered. We need all kinds of motivations, all kinds of, of, of reasons to continue and to push um, through the di life difficulties and challenges. And every time you need to find a new advice and a an, an new solution for your issues, and ways to get rid of the laziness and the sadness and and all the problems that we that we're dealing and confronting on daily basis. So one day you should remind yourselves of the Creator's love to you, and one day you need to remind yourself that the Creator Himself He needs your help, and one time you need to remind yourself that people are not able to pray for themselves and all right I'm gonna pray for them and sometimes you can just like sit and be quiet and look at Hashem and think about Hashem and say to Hashem with the minimum of words or even just in your thoughts let me succeed let me be happy let me find my true happiness let me achieve the goals that you you want me to achieve and to become that person you want me to be we should not be scared to be who we are and to share our thoughts with the Creator and to express our feelings and our mind with Him like we're talking to our best friend because that's His main will. That is the most divine and highest will of them all. That He wants us to want Him. That He wants us to love Him. Like Shema is saying to us, Vahavta. Et Hashem Elokecha, you should love Hashem, your God, Bechol Levavcha, with all your heart, Bechol Nafshecha, with all your spirit, Bechol Meodecha, with everything you have, with all your power. You need to love and to love and to love. And how do you love? Once you give a present, once you think about Him, once you, you pray for Him, once you just hug Him, once you just desire for Him to be good, once you think to yourself, okay, what can I do for him, for him to be happy? In all the ways that you can love, you should love Hashem as well. In all your ways, in all the paths of life, in all the lanes, in all the roads, in all the ups, in all the downs, you should love Hashem, you should embrace Hashem, you should recognize Hashem's godliness that is treasured inside of you, and that's your soul. That's the light of your spirit, of your true being. And when we're being honest with the Creator, when just we open our heart like, like with a best friend, with a good friend, then the best, um, the, most, um, the, 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 the most honest prayer, the highest in quality um, prayer will come out like the verse is saying, Nafshi, the spirit, my spirit came out when I, when I spoke, when I talked to heaven. So to believe in ourselves is to believe that our prayers are important and to allow ourselves to pray and to talk like we talk to our best friend and not to be scared of that. Thank you so much. Hi. <laughs> yes.
please subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com.